Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I can hear myself playing. This is pathetic. How does this work? Boom. There we go. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. The new year has started well, complete with my iPad playing my own music in the background. 15 seconds later. Happy New Year. We're back. We're live. Back in the new improved organ room. Yes, Mrs. Garchura is sitting to my right, chatting to you in the live chat. If she hasn't said hello yet, she will very soon. So, welcome back. Tonight is going to be a theatre organ night. And tonight, I'm going to show you how a theatre organ works. And tonight, I'm going to show you what you can do with a theatre organ. And I'm going to play lots of music on a theatre organ. And it's not just going to be hot, hot, hot jazzy stuff like we just did. That was way down yonder in New Orleans. That was, that was a request for someone who isn't even, hasn't even requested it tonight. But if Ken is watching, Ken, Ken's wife is from New Orleans. And um, I love playing things from New Orleans. Uh, so, yeah, that was for Ken's wife, if Ken's watching tonight. And um, also, also, I may have a little surprise for you tonight. Now, um, I've noticed that someone called... Andrew is watching and I'm going to ask Andrew if I can put up on screen tonight if I can put up the picture that Andrew sent about an hour ago. So Andrew if that's alright with you give me a thumbs up and I'll know it's alright and then we'll pop that picture up at some point during the live stream. Andrew sent me a wonderful picture today and um, I think we need to share it with everybody. So Andrew if that's alright with you let me know. So who's all here? Who's all here? The gang is here, apparently. I saw Mrs. Gotchor writing, Hello, Gotchor gang. Who's here, Vanessa? I don't know if she's here. Everybody's there. All, all, all possible people, she said. All yeah. possible people. Yeah? Vanessa Gleiswanderer is not here. Gleiswanderer is not here. And Stefan B. and Stefan Berger. Stefan B. and Stefan Berger, who is not here? I don't know. Is Pan Lomito there? Pan Lomito. Where is Pan Lomito? Where are all these wonderful people? Okay, there we go. Now, what is a theatre organ? A theatre organ, screen please, Mrs. Gantro, number four, please. Thank you very much. A theatre organ is something very different looking, at least, to a normal church organ. Um, mainly because the consoles of a theatre organ are very decorated, or they can be. And in this case, it's a very decorated console. Look at all that lovely gold leaf on white paint and things. It's a bit kitschy and over the top. But it is, of course, a rather good fun. Now, if you can see my mouse moving around here, we have, of course, the four manuals and the pedals that you would find on any other organ. And then around the organist in a horseshoe shape, as you can, I hope you can see my mouse doing that, um, you see all the stop tabs. Now the stop tabs are, ping, they are sort of rendered on this little screen here. Let me quickly cut back to myself. Hello, I can do that too. Mrs. Cartridge doesn't need to do the cutting tonight. I can do it too. And um, these are all the tabs laid out according to the manuals. Now I have four manuals. This organ has four manuals, which is very handy. And let's run through them very quickly. The bottom manual is what's called the accompaniment. And it tends to have, let's just say, slightly, maybe slightly softer stops. Uh, this isn't a very soft combination, but... And the idea is you've got your feet down on the pedals. And then you use your left hand to sort of do the, as the Garcho gang calls it, the Oompa Loompa music. Loompa. Okay, so that's the idea there. Okay, so, and then you have three different manuals that give you three different registration possibilities. For example, I have this on this manual. I have this on this manual. And I have this on this manual. So I can swap between those three manuals to play my melody. And I'm accompanying myself here with feet. And the accompaniment there. So that's a brief run through of what's going on. Now, a normal church organ will have sounds like something like this. It's not a very nice sound, you will, uh, uh, we will admit, but they're not designed to sound like church organs, they're designed to sound like theatre organs. And the main thing that a theatre organ sounds like is this sound, this wobbly sound. 
which is a wonderful big fat flute called a tibia clausa. Now there are all sorts of sounds um, unique to a theatre organ, like these vox humane. Different vox humanas, that's one for Reen. Reen is of course watching. Isn't that wonderful? And you can start mixing all these things together to make some rather nice sounds. Now, on a classical organ, you would start with the flutes and the diapasons, the principles, to build up your organ sound. Not so on a theatre organ. A theatre organ is, is an orchestral... Or actually, hold on, it's called... The original theatre organs by the Robert Hope Jones Company, they were called the Hope Jones Unit Orchestra. More on that in a minute. But the word orchestra is what we're working with here. And, um, oh, sorry, didn't I want to change the registrations there? Yes, I did. And um, that's better. And the way these organs are sort of build up the sounds, they start with the string sounds. And they have some very nice sounding strings. Here's a very soft string. Now that's much reedier and stringier than a church organ sound. There are three ranks of pipes here at different pinches to give a sort of slightly sort of um, out of tune effect. Those are the violins. And then we have the ones called the gambas. They are much bigger. And I'll try and play some right notes while I'm doing that. Now, you can then add the tremulants to that. Those are the things that make the ear all wobbly and it makes it vibrato-y, if you know what I mean. But if we take all the strings here at certain pitches and add the vox humane to that sound, we get this. Now, this is the kind of sound you have on sort of more ballady theatre organ music and you can do some rather lovely things with this. For example...
sentimental journey, or our sentimental journey, as it's originally called. Now, I leave my headphones on. I wanted to explain that to you. Now, we started out there. I'm going to do a bit of sort of academic stuff in the background. I hope you don't mind. So we started with strings, literally just the strings and the vox humana. So just the violins and the two vox humanas that this organ has with the tremulants. And that gives this lovely sort of breathy, stringy sound. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? Now, if you're ever going to learn to play the theatre organ yourself, there are certain things you must watch out for. Now, I am, this is Gartra, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this myself. Um, I'm, if you look at the um, registrations here, I'm on this manual here. There's all these stops here are under the great manual, which is the second manual. And all these, so I've got the violins at 16 foot, the violins at 8 foot, and the solutional at 8 foot, and both vox humanas at 8 foot. All the tremulants are on, that's the wobbly things here, and that gives this lovely sound. Okay, pretty clever. Now, because I'm using 16 foot sounds, here are my violins, yes. The deeper I get, the thicker and muddier the sound becomes, so you must be very careful when you're playing this kind of stuff that I was doing. Yeah, where you're sort of doing a melody in octaves, filling in the chords. That you don't really go too much below middle C because it starts to get very muddy. Listen to this if I do that down here. Sounds very muddy and gruff, and we don't want that. Now, to add to that, I made it more stringy by then adding the gambas. So here's without the gambas, with the gambas. So it becomes more shimmering and much more stringy. Now I added the strings at the four foot pitch, that's an octave higher. So I now have things at 16, eight, and four foot. That's two different octaves, three different octaves, sorry, sounding together. Isn't that wonderful? Now, after that, I added something that gives a nice hollow sound. Listen to this. That's a lovely hollow sound. And that's added by using our tibias. Those are the big, fancy, wobbly flutes. Here they are on their own. Once again, wait a minute, let me just quickly get some tibias here. There you go. Yeah. And because they're so big and fat at that octave, I added them at a higher octave to give that nice hollow effect. And you'll see what I mean when I move on now, because then I add them at the normal pitch, the eight foot, and now you get this. Without, and then with. Wow, what a difference, yeah? So, and after that, I added higher pitches, the two foot pitches. So here's the eight, 16, eight, four, and two. And then, so now we've got all the tibias, 16, 4, 8, and 2, and some in-between stuff as well. Now, after that, I then added some even higher stuff, two-foot strings. Two-foot strings, do they exist anywhere? And a one-foot flute, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, because I'm playing big band style music, so when I did this... On the orchestral division, which is uh, this one here, this is the third man, you can see I've just pretty much added everything. Um, and that gives that big snappy, that big snappy big band sound, isn't that rather cute? And then right at the beginning, I don't know if you noticed it, I had this. Isn't that cute? As, uh, not a xylophone, a vibraphone. Isn't that lovely? And it's great fun. So all of that added together means I can do something again. Let me go back from the beginning and I'll show you exactly what I did. I'll play a different tune this time. You might recognize this.
wonderful sounds. Now, something I was doing in the middle of that, I hope you noticed, I was doing the legendary Jesse Crawford technique. Who the hell is Jesse Crawford? Jesse Crawford was, it was coined the poet of the organ back in the 1920s during the heyday of the theatre organ. And Jesse Crawford started out on the East Coast, and uh, the West Coast actually, and um, eventually ended up in New York. And he was the head organist for the Paramount Group and all the Paramount Cinemas. And he was the organist at the Paramount Cinema in New York with its wonderful four manual, ah, 30 something, 36, I think, 36, 34, 36 rank. Well, it's, uh, the organ still exists. It's not in the cinema now. It's in the University of Brooklyn in the, basketball hall in the sports hall of the University of Brooklyn. Uh, it's a wonderful instrument. Every time I've been in New York, the organ hasn't been playable. It's always been either, either it was flooded or it was being restored or it was flooded again or it was on fire. Um, so they don't want me to come and play it. But anyway, Jesse Crawford was the organ organist there. And Jesse Crawford had this, he was basically self-taught, but he had this wonderful technique of um, sliding between sort of notes. So instead of playing like I did Misty there. Yeah, it's only three notes. La -dee -dum. That's all it does, the melody. So Jesse Crawford would have done. And put in not all of the semitones in between, but some of them. And that's that's the thing. It's not all of them. It's not it's not that, it's And getting that right is the difficult thing. Now, what he also did was he would do that in the inner voices. So if I play that melody in octaves, yeah, and what I can do now is I'll slide the bottom one. That sounds pretty clever already, isn't it? But Jesse Crawford would take it further. He would put some middle notes in sort of the sort of glissando middle notes. Now that's very difficult to do, it takes a lot of practice. And um, I never practice, so that's, that's um, <laughs> so um, that you've got to be careful, but it is doable and it's a lovely effect when you can do it. Especially if you're doing sort of things like I did at the end. I was quite loud at the end, wasn't I? Full organ there and it was. All that kind of stuff, yeah? So if you have a melody here. All that kind of stuff. Now, of course, I've added some reverb to this organ to make it sound like we're in a huge um, cinema somewhere in the States. So you can play around with those effects as well. But isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great what you can do? It's great fun. Great fun. Now, um, Mrs. Gartrell, would you mind um, giving me the laptop, please, very quickly? Yeah. Please. Oh, she's a cheeky move sometimes. Come on, give me the laptop, please. <laughs> She's very cheeky, very cheeky. Now, um, earlier on, I said that, um, yes, here it is. Uh, mm, 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 I need to, oh my goodness. I'm very good at doing this myself, apparently. I need to, there it is. I need to take this and I need to do that. And boom, there we are. Earlier this evening, I told you I received a picture, an image, a photo from someone here. Vanessa's not paying attention. She's scribbling to her mum text messages the whole time. Earlier on this evening, I received a message from Andrew. Andrew is one of our one of our stalwart um, uh, audience members. Andrew's been watching and supporting us from the very beginning, and Andrew's a rather wonderful chap. And Andrew, rather surprisingly, sent me a picture this evening. And that picture, let's put that picture up right now, please. Um, press the auto button. There it is. Just press the auto button. Yeah. Yeah. And then boom. Look. That's Andrew with his Garchor Gang mug. Isn't that exciting? He bought himself a Garchor Gang mug for Christmas time. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. If any of you want to get your hands on your own Garchor Gang mug, or you already have, then send us a picture and we will make sure we get that picture of the Garchor Gang mug. I don't know what you're drinking in there, Andrew. You might be drinking whiskey for all I know. I hope you are, actually. Oh, I see. And Vanessa's saying in the background, she finds the socks rather cute as well. Apparently we have socks for sale on there as well. Yeah? Have you just posted socks for people? 
Is it? Oh, I see. Yeah, All right. Uber, I think, are common now. Oh, yes, by the way, uh, yes, in the new year, um, we're going to be extending our merchandise range. This was all her idea. I have nothing to do with it. Um, we're extending our merchandise range, and, um, and we're going to start with Tuba, which was coined, of course, by the Gartrell gang during our Alessandria video. This organ has a Tuba, by the way. It's even called Tuba, and it sounds like this. <laughs> That's quite tuba-ish, isn't it? But something that's better than the tuba is the French trumpet. And even better than the French trumpet is the English horn. It gets very international, this kind of thing. Ooh, that's exciting. Now, we'll get back to that in a minute. I'm going to change my registrations again, and I'm going to play some different music. We're in jazzy mode tonight, don't forget, theatre organ mode. Now, when you're playing jazz in a theatre organ, you can do whatever you want. You can start adding your, um, your, um, that's for Colin. Remember Colin? Colin likes that ending. Da -da 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 -da. That's for Colin. Um, this organ has pianos, it has xylophones, it has glockenspiels, it has drums, it has cymbals, it has everything. And I am going to include most or some of those in a piece of music now simply called South.
with the most politically incorrect lyrics you've heard in 70 years. Anyway, a wonderful old jazz tune from the 20s called South. And um, there's going to be quite a bit of that tonight, quite a bit of that fun music from those times. Um, you can do anything you want on a theatre organ, literally. Now, I saw earlier this evening somebody requested something by Duke Ellington, which is fine. Duke Ellington is one of my favourite composers, but you requested my least favourite tune by Duke Ellington. It's one of those hackneyed old numbers that every band in the world has to play. Uh, it's called Caravan, and I, I will play it sometime, but I'm, I'm not going to play it today because, sorry, it's, like I said, it's not my favourite tune in the world. But Duke Ellington wrote so many wonderful pieces of music, and um, here's one of my favourite ones by Duke Ellington, and it's great for the beginning of a new year when we hope things are going to get better. It's quite simply called, I'm beginning to see the light. Thank you. 
a spot of Duke Ellington there. I'm beginning to see the light. And one of these days we'll do a Duke Ellington night. Who fancies a Duke Ellington night? Um, when I was at university, um, my uh, one of my, I don't know, I don't, thesis is the wrong word, but one of my big things I did at university was um, the life and works of Duke Ellington. And I think I've probably got almost every book that was ever written about Duke Ellington somewhere in the attic. And um, wonderful, wonderful chap. Uh, died in 1971, so sadly I never got to meet him. I was born in 1973, so that wouldn't have worked. Um, but I know a number of people who did meet and work with Duke Ellington, and they said he was an absolute pig. Um, <laughs> but um, as was sadly often the case with these guys, I also met a few people that worked with Count Basie over the years, and they said he was an absolute pig as well, but in a more sort of cool sort of, hey, I'm Count Basie and you, aren't that kind of way which is kind of cool actually but Duke Ellington was just sort of hey I'm Duke Ellington and you can you know what I mean um, difficult to work with but an absolute genius when it came to composing wonderful music so I think we might do uh, might do a Duke or maybe do a Duke Ellington and Count Basie night wouldn't that be fun that would be fun now um, recently somebody asked me how do you change all these registrations you're playing the organ Going from this sound, and then suddenly, suddenly you get that sound in the middle. How does that work? Well, it's quite simple. All over my little console here, this is the console, the four manuals and pedals, I have little buttons and they're hidden. Actually, Mrs. G, can you put on camera number three, please? Uh, yeah, number three, please. Um, I don't know if you can see this on screen. Can I see this on screen, actually? No, you might not be able to see it really all that well. But here, under each manual, can you see this? You can probably, see, um, if you look on the screen of my computer while I'm doing this, you can see things moving around, stop switching on and off. And under each manual, I have two buttons. And they are, they sort of, they recall, they recall, thank you, they recall, I did it for you. They recall um, sort of pre um, pre-recorded, not recorded, pre-saved um, combinations of stops or tabs that I have on the organ there and um, obviously I have to set them up in advance, that much is true, and um, I can sort of swap between them, I can move backwards and forwards between my things there um, by doing that. Now I also have 10 different buttons here that are sort of set up for general general sounds that you might want playing theatre organ music. So for example I have a very soft sound here. which is quite cool. And then I can move up, sorry, and then I can move to a second one. Which is a bit heavier, and then I can move to a third one. Yeah, and that kind of thing. And it's, all four manuals have different stops saved and all these different combinations. So the easiest way to do it is moving backwards and forwards with these pistons, that's what they're called, these thumb buttons, these thumb pistons directly underneath the manual. So when I'm playing, I've always sort of got a thumb nearby and I can get in there. Um, so that's how that works. Some people think it's all sort of wizardry and, you know, um, um, I'm doing sorts of weird things there. Now, at the same time, I also have two buttons that I can use with my feet so beside all my pedals at the bottom. So if my hands are tied up in places where I can't get to those thumb pistons, I can, see that changing? I can do it on, I can do it with my feet as well, backwards and forwards. So there's always a possibility to do that. So that's how this is working. Very clever. Someone's asked for a piece of music by Fats Waller. I think it was Colin. Colin, you asked for Fats Waller, didn't you? Honeysuckle Rose? Mm, Colin, wrote it, yeah. Colin wants Honeysuckle Rose. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, this is Honeysuckle Rose for Colin. Colin's a young chap in, I think, New York. Is that right, Colin? And Colin is, normally he requests hymns from the German hymn book, but tonight he's requesting Honeysuckle Rose. I much prefer that.
That then was Honeysuckle Rose for Colin. Uh, thank you very much. People have been requesting the Dan Busters March. That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> do that one day. Um, someone called Sid said, by a German guy, I'm not German, I'm Scottish. I live in Germany, but I'm not, well, I am actually now, I've got dual nationality, but never mind. I'm not originally German, so there um, So how about that? But yes, the Dam Busters might, that'd be good fun, wouldn't it? We can do that someday. Um, British people always start laughing and thinking, oh, oh, oh the Dumbusters march in Germany. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, well, um, we're over that now. It's well over sort of 70, 80 years ago. So I think we can get, you know, we've moved on. Um, back to theatre organ music. Yes. Oh, Tico Tico. Yes, I will do Tico Tico. One. I have a, a recording somewhere of me playing Tico Tico on an American instrument. And I went crazy doing it. Um, that's a long time ago when I was young and innocent. Don't know what she's looking at me like that for. Anyway, she's yes. In oh, I see. I see. Okay, yes. Okay. I, I'm being ignored because she's writing with you, so that's rather good. Now, I've written a few things here that I wanted to play. Oh yes, I wanted to play that, didn't I? Um, here's a piece of music you kind of have to play when you're doing ballady stuff. Um, I remember back at the beginning of this evening, I was showing you all this um, sort of, all that kind of stuff, yeah, and. What you can do, what you can do, um, all of these sounds that we've created here, all of these sounds work in different registers. Now, what does that mean? So it means I can play it here. That just sounds very muddy and fat, but if I play it here, that's quite good, isn't it? And I can play it up here, And it sounds completely different. Now, if I move up to my other manual, I have something called the tuba and the tibias here to give a big fat sound. Isn't that cute? Uh, how about this, an octave higher? Much more sort of singy-songy. And down low, it's very good. Yeah? That's not bad, is it? And you can do all of these things in different registers, and that gives sort of different effects all the time. And that's useful when you're playing ballads. Um, for example, one of the most famous ballads of all time. I'm going to get copyright claimed on this, but this is going to be fun anyway. One of the most famous ballads of all time. See if you can guess what it is in the first two seconds. Oh, and by the way, it's nice to see Elvis Presley with us tonight, isn't it? Hello, Elvis. Elvis lives. That's good. Elvis Presley. We recently had someone called Jean Longley watching the videos as well. I think Longley and Elvis are obviously ganging up on us from, from the other side.
actually the proper theatre organ ending for that piece should have been this. Bear with me. And you, <laughs> you have to have the cheesy chime at the end of something like that. It's over-the-top nonsense, but it's great fun, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? That was, of course, Somewhere Over the Rainbow from the film The Wizard of Oz, one of the first pieces of music to win an Oscar. There you are. I bet you didn't know that. Or if you did, I bet you've forgotten it. Ah, now... What's this I hear you say? Is theatre organ music just jazz music? No. There is actually something out there called theatre organ music, and this is wonderful. Now, in the US of A, um, the theatre organ had its heyday back in the, sort of the, the big heyday of the cinema, so the 30s, right up until sort of the 40s, and after that it sort of fizzled out a bit. But over here in Europe, and especially in the UK, the theatre organ scene remained active for a lot longer. And um, it's a very different kind of scene. And a lot of uh, British, particularly British, um, theatre organists were also composers of music, especially for the theatre organ. Now, when I was younger, and as Graham thankfully pointed out, innocent, um, I sort of specialised in some of this music. And there's a lot of it around. And I've got rather a lot of it. Um, back in the 90s, my good friend and... BBC presenter Nigel Ogden, who um, presented a program called The Organist Entertains for about 120 years on BBC Radio 2. Sadly, it's no longer on the air, um, but Nigel's still doing podcasts, which is great. So he's still active in the organ world, which is wonderful. Um, check them out online if you haven't already. But Nigel was very kind and gave me a huge pile of music, um, copies of all sorts of theatre organ music from theatre organists that he had amassed over the years. And he sort of Pass, well, not pass, he copied it and, and gave me copies of it all. And some of it was absolutely wonderful stuff, and some of it's even stuck in my head, and I think I can still play some of it by memory. And here's a piece of music. Now, if there are any British theatre organists watching tonight and I get the wrong composer, then do please tell me, do correct me. But I think it was Charles Smitten. I think it was Charles Smitten. And... Um, this is his piece of music called Bosun in the Barn. It's a bit of a sort of a barn dancey sort of um, sailor horn pipey sort of thing, but completely different style of organ sound. Listen to this. Thank you. 
was right. I think I missed one bit out. It does end with that. How did we get back to D major? I must dig up the music and have a look. Isn't that fun, though? And that's sort of much sort of crispier kind of music, yeah? And I don't know if you noticed, but the tremulants were off at the beginning. Very different. Very different. Now, very different indeed is a wonderful piece of music from the old... Where is it? There it is. From the old days of my jazz band playing. Um, for years and years and years, I played... I played in all sorts of bands. Huh? What, 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 what? Highland Cathedral. Highland Cathedral. Ooh, yes. That's, I've played Highland Cathedral before and I got into trouble for playing it for copyright reasons. Um, so I, um, I will at some point do a rather bizarre improvisation over Highland Cathedral, hiding the melody so cleverly that the bots at YouTube won't pick it up. Mm, that's one of those pieces of music that was stolen by a couple of Germans from an old Scottish thing from the 60s. I have a recording from the 1960s um, that my great uncle had and it was, a, it was a, an old Scottish band and they were playing what was basically the melody of Highland Cathedral back in the 60s and the two guys who claimed to have written it and invented it they added a bit in the middle and that then was their invention Highland Cathedral. Anyway we're not going to go into into German bands stealing Scottish melodies are we because that would just be the entire carnival industry in Germany gone overnight. Anyway um, what was I going to say? What was I going to... Oh yes, my jazz band days. When I was... Um, over the years I've played in all sorts of bands and all sorts of different music with all sorts of different people. And um, something that I always gravitated back towards was jazz bands. I started playing in jazz bands as a teenager. Um, in Inverness in the north of Scotland there was a band called the Tin Pan Alley Band. And I played trombone in the Tin Pan Alley Band for a while. And occasionally I played piano with them as well. And then I went off to university and I used to come back to Inverness, obviously, to, you know, for holidays, vacations and whatever. And there was another band in Inverness called the Ness River Rhythm Kings. Try saying that when you've had two whiskeys. The Ness River Rhythm Kings. And um, I used to sit in with them on a regular basis. And that's where I got to learn quite a lot of sort of jazz uh, standards, jazz vocabulary, jazz standards, all the old things. And then years later... Living in Germany, I played with all sorts of different bands, and my final band, um, before he retired, and sadly he's no longer with us, but it was a wonderful trumpeter, an old English guy called Rod Mason, and I don't know if, some, some of you might remember the name Rod Mason. Back in, the, back in the 70s, there were all these sort of British, I'm not going to say trad bands, but classic jazz bands, so there was Acker Bilk, uh, Kenny Ball, Chris Barber, all those kinds of guys, and Rod... Rod Mason was sort of up there with them. Rod actually played in Acker Bilk's band for quite a few years as well. Rod was the trumpeter with uh, Acker Bilk for quite a while. And Rod moved to Germany and sort of got a bunch of British guys together. And we were Rod Mason and his Hot Five. I was on the piano, one of the Hot Five. And every concert we played, wherever we were in the world, started with a wonderful piece of music, quite simply called Panama. You might know it as the Panama Rag, but it's actually only called Panama.
Panama rag, as known by some people. Isn't that good fun? I love playing this kind of stuff. Now, this is where you can go completely crazy in a theatre organ. Um, it's great fun. For example, in the bass. Yeah. So, all of that, I've got cymbals, I've got piano. All down in the pedals there. And the same kind of thing, I've got a tambourine, something called a side stick, which is that tappy thing. Tap, tap, tap. And then you can really sort of boogie about. And that kind of thing, yeah? So I'm not doing... I'm... I'm doing all that with my feet. Now, we're trying to work out a way of getting a pedal cam on this system here, but we'll get there. We'll work it out. We'll get a pedal cam on there for you. Good fun, eh? We'll get a pedal cam on there. Talking of boogie woogie, I think it's time to finish this evening's proceedings. It is 20 past 11 here in sunny Germany. Next time. Next time. Next time. Oh, someone has requested... Wolfgang! Wolfgang hat sich gewünscht, Macky Messer. Ach, was ich davon halte? Ja, klar, super Stück. Heute nicht. Bam, 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 bam. Let's do that next time. We'll do it. I know what we'll do. I'll do Macky Messer next time on a classical organ. There is an old, there's an old recording of um, um, Kurt Weil playing an organ in a cinema in Berlin with Bertolt Brecht singing badly. That kind of thing, all that kind of sort of 1920s nasal singing. Yeah, let's do that next time. I shall write that down. I shall write that down. We'll do that next time and we'll do it on a classical organ. How about that? That's a good one. Okay, um, we're going to finish off tonight with a bit of boogie woogie and there's no better instrument in the world to play boogie woogie on than a theatre organ. Get ready for this.
ladies and gentlemen. Ah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for taking part. Thank you very much for your generous donations. Thank you for your suggestions. Thank you for being there. Thank you for coming back in the new year. Thank you for just thank you. Ah, that was it for this evening. Thank you very much. That was our little brief introduction into the world of the theatre organ. We'll be back live on Friday night is organ music night again. Uh, but there will be something in between as well, so don't worry. So back live on Friday night. I hope you'll join us at the usual time, usual place, for some more organic goodies. I wish you a very good start in the new week, the first week of the new year. Back to work tomorrow for most of you, I suppose. Sorry about that. Hope you get on with it, and we'll see you at the end of that naughty week. Friday night is organ music night. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care, watch out, and stay safe. Bye-bye.